Here's your homework on a review combining arithmetic and geometric and seeing if you can identify which one it is. So for number seven, it says determine whether the sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. And if it is, write a, a, an explicit formula, then find the ninth term. So I'm going down by eight, down by eight, down by eight. So it's definitely arithmetic. The formula would be negative eight and minus one plus 72. And then to find the ninth term, you plug it into that formula. And the answer is eight. Number two, am I subtracting or adding? Well, I go positive, negative, positive, negative. That's already an indicator. It could be geometric, definitely not arithmetic. And if I'm multiplying, you can see, well, negative two-thirds divided by a half, well, times the reciprocal. And then take the next two, three-quarters times the reciprocal. And you can tell that these do not match. So this is neither because we don't have a common ratio or a common difference. Number three, when I look at it, subtract eight. No, it's not going to subtract 12 and so on, so it's divide. So negative 24 divided by negative 16, three over two. Negative 36 divided by negative 24, yep, three over two. So it looks like it's a geometric, three over two. A1 is negative 16. 3 over 2 to the exponent, uh, n minus 1. To find the ninth term, we plug in 9, and then use your calculator, and you get negative 6,561 over 16. Number 4, am I adding, or again, it's alternating, so it can't be arithmetic. Is it uh, geometric? So when you divide negative 117 over 39, when I divide 351 over negative 117. So there's a common ratio of negative three. So the general rule would be 39 R, which is negative three to the N minus one. And then to find the, what is it, the ninth term, just plug in nine. And the answer is 255,879. Negative, negative, positive. So there's a chance this is arithmetic. What am I adding or subtracting? It's going up, right, in value. So if you look and you go, okay, what's negative 5 over 2 subtract a negative 10? So with common denominators, that would be 10 or 20 over 2. So that would be 15 over 2. So if I do the same thing here and subtract a negative, and get common denominators. So 10 over 2 plus 5 over 2, I get 15 over 2. So we have a common difference. The formula is the common difference. N minus 1, subtract 10. The ninth term, you plug in 9. And then your answer is 505 over 2. Number 6, add 7. All right, that's not going to work times eight times eight, that's not gonna work, neither. So you're not adding or multiplying here. Number seven, can you add and know whether it is uh, geometric or arithmetic? So here, I'm multiplying by negative four each time, so it's geometric. So to add up the first 18, eight terms, we take the first term times one, subtract, in this case, it's a negative number, negative four to the exponent eight, and then one subtract negative four in the denominator. Be careful how you type it in the calculator and you get your answer. Number eight, we're adding nine every time, so it's arithmetic. So the 19th, so how many terms do we have? 19 over two. The first term is 23. I need to find the last term, which I don't know. So let me just do that underneath here. So to find the 19th term, the common difference is 9. And that would be 19 minus 1 plus 23. So use that in your calculator. And the 19th term is 185. So it's 23 plus 185. 
And so that sum is 1,976. Number nine. So times two, no, no. Add, subtract, subtract four each time. So it's arithmetic. So again, I need to find the, um, the last term. I don't know, it's the 22nd term. So the common difference, we're subtracting four every time. Um, we're looking for the 22nd term. So there's your setup. So the last term then would be negative 88. So the sum of the first 22 would be 22 divided by two, the first term and the last term, and then put it in your calculator, you get negative 1,012. That's an eight. Number 10. Number 10, if you are dividing, so five over two divided by or the reciprocal, I get one half. And if I look carefully, you're definitely going one half, one half, one half. So it's geometric. That's your R. So the sum of the first eight terms would be five, and then one subtract one half to the eight, and then one subtract one half on the bottom. That gives you 1,275 over 128. Number 11, eight over three subtract 13 over six, get common denominators times two. That's three over six or one half. If I take 13 over six and I add one half to it, I get 19 over six and it matches. It's gonna be arithmetic. Um, I need to know the ninth term. So to find the ninth term, I go one half um, nine minus one uh, plus 13 over six. So put that in your calculator and that is 37 over six. And then the formula. So to add up there, we have a fraction. I'm just gonna use that line. We're gonna have 37 over six. Um, no, 13 over six, I mean. It was arithmetic, right? So why am I doing it that way? So arithmetic, so N, so nine divided by two, the first plus the last one, and then use your calculator. So that's 75 over two. Number 12, so it's alternating. So if I divide, I could have divided these to be easier, right? But it's negative a third. So the sum of the first six ones, the first one's 135. One subtract negative a third to the exponent six, and then one subtract negative a third. Put it all together, and you get 910 over nine. All right, turn the page. Again, you can press pause anytime. Here we have sigma notation. Note if it's exponential, it means it's geometric. So this is exponential. So to find the sum of the first 10 terms, plug in one and you get the answer three. That's the common ratio to the base. So set it up. Oops, that's a two. One take away two. 3,069. Here again, I wanna find the sum. This time it is linear. So linear means arithmetic. So if it's linear arithmetic, then I need to be able to add the first 21 terms. So you have 21 divided by two, plug in one, uh, plug in 21, and you get 140, uh, 141, and that's it. So plug in one, then plug in 21 and get that answer. Then simplify it and you get 1,400, 1,491, there it is. 15, what is it, exponential or linear? So again, it's linear and let's see. So the sum from three to 19 is 16, add one, so it's 17 terms. So it's 17 over two, plug in three and you get one take away 19 over 30, so that's 11 over 30. Plug in 19 and 19 take away 19, zero, right? No. Yeah, plug in 19, oh, it's over three, so multiply it by 10, 190 take away 19. 
So you get common denominators. So you have 19 over 3. So it ends up being 190 over 30. And if you reduce that all down, you actually get 57 over 10. But the whole thing's going to be 1,547 over 30 fractions. All right, number 16. Is it exponential or linear? So it's exponential. So to add up the first 6 to 16, 10, add 1 to 11. So to find the first term, negative 1 half, plug in 6. So it's negative 1 half to the 6. So oh, 6 take away 1. So it's an odd exponent when you go 6 take away 1. So it's 5. So it's negative 1 over 32. Then it's 1 subtract negative 1 half to the 11. And then 1 subtract negative 1 half. Careful with your calculator, and it's negative 85 over 4,096. Here, again, exponential. So we want to sum the first 1 to infinity. Love it. Now, negative 8 over 7, er, the uh, absolute value of that's bigger than 1. This diverges, no sum, because it goes to infinity. So the absolute value of that is bigger than 1. So 18, infinity, 0. 0.8, there is a sum. It converges. So for the infinite sum, uh, you plug in 1, and you get negative 5.6, and then 1 subtract 0. 0.8. Again, 0. 0.8 is smaller than 1. That's why it diverges, and the answer is negative 28. All right, a couple stories, and then we're done. A brick wall was built such that the bottom row had 51 bricks. And each row above contained three less. That's negative three. Then the previous term, and how many, which row contains 12 bricks? So I'm going to go 12 equals, and I have negative 3, n minus 1 plus 51. And solving for n will give me which row it is. So subtract 51, and 12 take away 51 is what? Negative 39. Divide, and uh, by negative 3, that's 13. And then add 1. And so which row has that many bricks? The answer is 14. All right, Alan deposits 5,000, earning 6% annual interest. Find the balance after 27 years. Hey, we can do it two ways here. So we're gonna do it like a geometric series and not the other formula that we used before, but it's basically the same formula. So the same formula that we used before. Here we go. So if I wanna find the sum of the first 27, we started with 5,000 and then 1 subtract, 6% is 0 0.06, but it's increasing, so it's 1.06 to the 27. And then 1 take away 1.06. And how much would be in the scales? $318,528.83. Done. All right, 21. Uh, credit card payment of $225 is due on the first of the month. Each day the payment is late, an additional 2.5% is charged. If Eric paid a total of 288, how late was his payment? So 288 is the final amount that was paid. It was 225. One subtract. Uh, 1.025, so the interest rate, put a 1 in front as it accumulates, and to the exponent n, oh, it's not even that, here, it is that, but here, 288, and it's a1, and it's just r, 1.025 to the n minus 1. Uh, use your calculator, and n equals 11. So if n equals 11, 11 take away 1 really means it was 10 days late. All right, number 22. A mechanic charges $17 for the first hour, $15.75, and then $14.50 for the third hour, if a certain job takes them seven hours, determine the total labor cost. So if I look really carefully, it is arithmetic. 
and it's going uh, down by a dollar twenty-five. So it's down by a dollar twenty-five. I know no auto mechanic that would cost less every hour. Anyways, it's going down a dollar twenty-five. So I need to know the sum of the first seven hours. So the sum would be seven over two, and then the first was seventeen, and then I need to figure out the last amount of how much it would cost. So the seventh term would be negative one point two five. Seven take away one plus seventeen, and that would be nine dollars and fifty cents. Ugh, none of that does even make sense in the real world. Far, far, far more. You should become a mechanic. I think that's a good job. And then solve it. It's ninety-two dollars and seventy-five cents. That was the total labor cost for what? Seven hours of work. That is insane. All right, not true. <laughs> G math over out. Good job doing your homework.